Well, that is not English. Well, that for Mr. Ren Gill has got to be Welsh, right? Now, I'm a little bit rusty on the language, but I think if I get my translation here on, thank you, Rosetta Stone, this is, uh, yeah, that's I have a very long dong and I want to party all night long or a rough translation at that. Oh, nice impact. Cool little plucky part here. Like you mix sort of this plucky tempo pacing with just these dramatic impacts and brass. Bom, bom, bom. But that vocal stacking at the beginning, it's really dope because it sounds like clone wrens, doesn't it? Like a choir of wrens because he's got a higher harmony sort of mids and then he's got lowers and he takes all those different vocal takes and he stacks them on top of each other. Sort of operatic to like guide us in with this and then woof, the drop hits you. I lay broken on the kitchen floor. I clawed at the laminate. Pain wandered my body. An uninvited guest. Bones of a home where the devil could rest. I cursed the gods. Curse. Bones of a home where the devil could rest. AKA the devil's inside of me. I love Ren's poetic nature and even pain being an uninvited guest. That sort of personification. He's got such a layered metaphorical way of laying things out. I would read a book by Ren. Broken on the kitchen floor. I clawed at the laminate, pain wandered my body, an uninvited guest, bones of a home where the devil could rest. I cursed the gods, cursed my messiah, cursed my maker, I cursed all of creation. There I lay, feeble and thin. Sick boy, sick boy, seven I said. Have you ever felt pain? He say seven I said. So reference in seven, seven deadly sins, but also the connection to his song and that same sort of melody and delivery from sick boy, sick boy, bitten by a tick boy. Feeble and thin. Sick boy, sick boy, seven I said. Have you ever felt pain? Stomach wrenching, unrelenting. Tell me, have you ever felt pain? Condescending, muscles clenching. Tell me, have you ever... Condescending, muscles clenching, stomach wrenching. I love the way that he just fits in that. Have you ever felt pain? One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Have you ever felt pain? One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Again, really good rhyme writing on these melodies here. And then pain is condescending. That just hit me. That's, again, another just interesting perspective to think about. Like pain looks down upon us all. Ha, <laughs> you silly humans. Suffer with me. I am pain. I cursed all of creation. There I lay, feeble and thin. Sick boy, sick boy, seven I said. Have you ever felt pain? Stomach wrenching, unrelenting. Tell me, have you ever felt pain? Condescending, muscles clenching. Tell me, have you ever felt pain? A rose emerges from the pavement cracks. I'll write my eulogy with broken glass. Mm. Eternal parallax. Pain. Pain the author. Eternal parallax. So a parallax in astronomy is how we help to calculate and measure distances, like to the stars, right? So as the Earth turns and revolves around the sun, as you change perspectives, right? And you change your, your space and your location in time, that alters our perspective and how we view things, right? So you take looking at a star from one point in time and then wait till we revolve around and look at it from a different point in time. And then you take that and combine that and use those measurements to calculate it out. So I take eternal parallax as sort of that shifting of perspective, right? We're always looking at the stars, looking up to the heavens at eternity in sort of an ideological sense and a metaphorical sense, but also this eternal parallax of like getting perspective on ourselves and trying to find our own self-identity. Wow, that is just that is just a layered little word to throw in there for Mr. Gill. Energy with broken glass, eternal parallax. Pain. Pain the I also love this sort of... Um, sad violin right you know sort of the typical metaphorical violin of sadness is kind of playing and guiding us with the strings at the back of this mix write my eulogy with broken glass eternal parallax pain pain the author i accept this pain the teacher bruised apprentice pain was this thing pain will come pain the mother i'm the son pain that splits you and too many hits you the dark and the light i'll convert the 
one pain that twists you the heavens dismiss that's a really important line for me and ren and i talked about this in our interview right one of the themes of this album is the dark and the light within us all and the pain splits you so the pain has divided him into this darkness and this light and for ren pain the author i accept this it's about him coming to terms with his pain and learning to live with it and learning to accept it and as he so eloquently put it you know you can't appreciate the light and the shining of the light if you haven't been through the darkness because what is light without shadows? And for him, it's this duality and coming to terms with our own internal duality and the light and the dark within us all and learning how to live with it. It's a huge theme on this album. So I love how he's using this sort of metaphorical writing and this splitting imagery to help guide us through that theme. Do when they hit you, the dark and the light will convert to one. Pain that twists you, the heavens dismiss you, the father, the ghost, and the holy son. Body bags, body bags, body bagging me. Zip it up quick, get their things on B. I search for peace in the belly of a beast. Sick boy, sick boy, on a mata pia. Running up a fever, following a lead. Sick boy, sick boy, Anamatapiya, Belly of the Beast. We got Animal Flow call outs right there. Belly of a and obviously Belly of the Beast, Mark of the Beast. Sick boy, sick boy, Anamatapiya. What's really cool too is like there's a lot of sort of production switches and impacts, but what he's doing a great job of is switching up his intonation, right? His sort of tone and his cadence. He started off and he kind of whispered and he brought you into here. And then he's had some different rap flows where he switches it up and he gets more kind of aggressive into attack mode. And then he adds sort of these sung harmonies and melodies in between it all. So he's always switching it up every like four to eight bars. Like he's keeping you on your toes with the constant changes in the flows, changes in intonation, changes in production. Very versatile as an artist. The I search for peace in the belly of a beast. Sick boy, sick boy, on a mata pia. Running up a fever, following a leader. Wanna be me, huh? Grass is not green on. Bright light seizure, dynamite dealer. Dy Bright light seizure, having like epilepsy, but wanna be me? The grass isn't greener. You see me and you see all the fame and notoriety that I have. Well, the grass is not so green after all this sickness that I've been through. You know, he's bitten by a tick. He was misdiagnosed. He suffered. And he keeps having these callbacks to being sick boy and to this song sick boy. Dine at the table of the coroner. You know, like, come eat off of my plate. Come dine with me. If you want this life of luxury and extravagance, well, really, it's it's the table and the plate of the coroner. Because death surrounds me. Dine at the table at the also relates to the body bag zipping up as well. You could think of, like, zipping up into a straight jacket because he's kind of crazy. He's on edge as death follows him where he goes. Coroner, E top four. 13 years and I've been feeling so star. Lucky number 13, just my luck. Empire's tumble, rubble and dust. All said so ironically there. Lucky number 13, Kiss My Luck. So he dropped this album, and he told me this again in our interview on October 13th, which for him signified not only Friday the 13th, which a lot of people would consider to be unlucky if they're superstitious, but also it's been 13 days since he was diagnosed with you know, his disease and started this whole journey. So 13 is a huge number for him. And he ties it throughout the Sick Boy album. And my dealer dine at the table of the coroner, E top four. 13 years and I've been feeling this all star. Lucky number 13, just my luck. Empires tumble, rubble and dust. The universe shrinks and the planets combust. In God we trust. God tied a noose to his neck and he walked to the edge and he jumped. Angels wept. I bear witness. Watching the whole thing unfold from my bed. A bed where I never depressed. A bed where I'm always depressed. A bed with the human oppressed. A bed for a tomb where I slept. A bed in the a, room, it's a, womb for this mess. Sick a bed for a tomb where I slept. A bed that's a womb for this mess. So there's that irony. And again, that duality and that splitting of light and dark. Birth and death. Birth is in a womb, but death is in a tomb. And for him, that bed is, is everything. It's his whole existence, his whole oppression. Because he did nothing but spend his days in bed. And then you have the religious imagery, right? In God we trust. And I can't help but feel like that's said ironically too. Because at this point, when he's sick and he's in this mind frame, like in Masochist, he's questioning everything, right? He's, he's tearing it all down. And his fate and the world around him and how that relates. But also in God we trust, you could see that like on a coin, right? Because... He went to the States. He tried to get treatment in the States. You can see him looking at the coin and our motto, in God we trust, and it's almost like in God we trust, right? Mm -hmm. oppressed, a bed for a tomb where I slap. A bed in the room, it's a wound for this mess. Sick boy, bitten by a tick boy. Tell me how it feels to be buried while you breathe. Stones and sticks, boy, pain is a gift. Boy. Tell me how it feels to be buried while you breathe. Wow, that hits different. By a tick boy, tell me how it feels to be buried while you breathe. Stones and sticks, boy, pain is a gift, boy. Hard to make a stand when you crawl on your knees and land kneel. 
Ooh. I kneel at the out. Notice how that, and I kneel, and it just hits with that last string sound. And then it just all stops for a second. Like that pace is almost like a heartbeat. Like it's racing, it's racing, it's racing. Sick boy, sick boy, bitten by a tick boy, calling out, and then sticks and stones. You know the saying, sticks and stones can break my bones, but words will never hurt me. Well, in this case, it goes beyond that because there's a whole destruction of his psychology and everything he's suffering and going through right now. Yeah, tech boy, tell me how it feels to be buried while you breathe. Stones and sticks, boy, pain is a gift, boy. Hard to make a stand when you crawl on your knees and land kneel. Hard to make a stand when you crawl on your knees because you're so literally sick. You're crawling. So how can you stand? But also the metaphorical saying, like, stand up for yourself. He's kind of taking that meaning and flipping it on its head. I kneel at the altar of my own disease and I beg. I beg this guy for mercy, mercy never came I dipped me dirty, 33 and hurting Cursing Jesus died at 33 and still my sins are lurking Gears are turning, future stays uncertain Surgeon incision, murder ambition Fear of the unknown preserves a religion Denounce the gods when my body went missing Back then the pain spread Denounce the gods where my body went missing Is that a reference to Joe right there? But I love the dirty, 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 da, 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 da goes into a nice sort of polyrhythmic scheme right there. That flow was nasty and then condensed up the rhyme schemes. And then as he hits 33 and he dwells on, Jesus only made it to 33. And he could just see parallels to that suffering, what he's going through. The unknown preserves a religion. Denounce the gods when my body went missing. Back then, the pain's... Fear of the unknown preserves a religion. That's an interesting commentary on religion, especially, you know, if you look at why number of people turn to religion, especially during medieval times, it was because of fear of the unknown, right? And that's really one of the questions that I think turns a lot of us to religion. Like we need to take comfort in something. And that's where we can find comfort in God and find comfort in the eternal. The unknown There's a lot of complexities to these lines. And again, a very poetic, very metaphorical nature of writing it all out. It's almost like we're wandering sort of the dark corridors of his mind as he turns through this stream of conscious and takes us on this journey with him. He announced the gods when my body went missing. Back then, the pain spray ricochet like a mat tan. Hot lead hit the bed that was trapped in. Red wing seraphim out of God's grace. Cried tears from heaven like Clapton. Stick pins in the- Eric Clapton, tears from heaven, reference right there, but then also red seraphim. Seraphim angels in the Bible, right? They had six wings. They were like on the hierarchy of God's angels. Like they were up there. So again, more religious references tying in with this. And you can just see him as he sits trapped in this bed and he starts musing because he feels like so close to death. So you can't help but start to wander into the world of the internal and start thinking about God and religion and questioning all these things. And that's why this I see this imagery kind of rushing into his mind again as he's walking us through this writing. Pin, red wing seraphim out of God's grace, cried tears from heaven like Clapton. Stick pins in the voodoo Hendrix, stick skin, stay humble Kendrick. Stay... Voodoo child Jimi Hendrix reference, stay humble Kendrick Lamar reference as well. So he had a Jimi Hendrix reference, he had an Eric Clapton reference, he had a Kendrick Lamar reference. Right? Stay humble. He needs to stay humble. But also we could feel like a voodoo doll because you stick pins in something, all these tests, everything that's being stuck into him. Or he could feel like karma and life's got a voodoo doll against him. And it's kind of laughing and fate's laughing as him as it sticks more pins in him. Clap then, stick pins in the voodoo Hendrix. Stick skin, stay humble Kendrick. Stay skeptic, check the biometrics. Blood stain, crime scene, full forensic. Lights on, lights on. Wow. Fade into the background. So down. From the silhouette of self-doubt. Self Again, that's another really good line. I love this beat switch here and just the gritty distortion to it. And what he does is instead of like going aggressive, he goes more into like a melodic singing voice and note here. So a lot of really good rhythms and tones he's finding in these pockets. So Running from the silhouette of self-doubt. By now, by now. Really should have figured this shit out. Lights on, lights on. Let it be, let it be, quote John Lennon, the Beatles song, let it be. So he's playing off of that versus just letting these things be, but he can't. He keeps overthinking and dwelling on this. And then John got shot for attention. John Lennon was killed with Yoko Ono outside of his apartment. And I think that's a, that's a really interesting story, isn't it? Because the killer was obsessed with Catcher in the Rye. And then he took offense to John saying that, you know, the the Beatles were greater than God. So you see Wren dwelling on God and these institutions and religion, right? And then John Lennon 
who was killed because he he upset someone because the the Beatles got so big. And then he wanted to take after Holden from Catcher in the Rye. That's right. So Holden was obsessed with hypocrites and the hypocrisy of, of adults and adulthood. And John Lennon's killer saw hypocrisy within him and thought that he was being a hypocrite because he's talking about God and these things and living a simple life, but he's living this life of luxury and self-degradation as he viewed it. So, you know, he goes to his apartment, and it's wild because he's, like, talking to his nanny in the morning. He talked to Yoko Ono. He's nice. He's talking to the doorman. Like, everything's okay. He even gets his autograph. And then later that night, boom, 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 five shots into his back, and he kills him. He assassinates him. So John Lennon got killed for his attention, notoriety. But I feel like all of the reasons why he was killed and those themes are kind of tying back to Ren's themes throughout this. And that almost like sounds like a shot down in the mix, doesn't it? You hear that? Boom. It sounds like it's like a super muted, muffled shot. Let it be, let it be. Quote John Lennon. Click that John got a shot for retention. What does that tell you about the good of intention? Britain has formed in a storm of aggression. Prophets get dropped, imagining heaven. Martin Luther, Mahatma, more dead than six, six, followed by six, seven, seven. Martin Luther, Mahatma. So Mahatma Gandhi, Martin Luther. Prophets get shot because they're reaching for heaven. And there's an irony that isn't there because Martin Luther King preached for peace and a positive change. Same with Mahatma Gandhi. And yet it took violent acts against them to remove them from this earth when they were only trying to achieve a heaven here on earth and achieve something greater for all of humankind and humanity. So again, he's tying in with these different characters throughout our history who have been assassinated for trying to do good. And he, he might feel and self-identify in this way. Like he's trying to do good. He's trying to do these positive things. And he just feels like life is just kicking him when he's down. And all the odds and everything is just stacked against him constantly. Tension. What does that tell you about the good of intention? Britain has formed in a storm of aggression. Prophets get dropped. Him. This beat is wild right here. Sitting heaven, Martin Luther, Mahatma, more dead than six, six, followed by six, seven, seven. Build him, praise him, bury him, dead him. I was born to be hot. Six, 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 and seven. Right? 666, the mark of the beast, book of revelations, the end of times, but also six and seven. Six and seven. That and could also equate to addition. Six plus seven, which makes lucky number 13 or unlucky number 13, depending on your perspective. But it all ties back in with this album. That's clever mathematical writing right there from Ren. I was born to be half a man with half a chance. My heart is in half, half righteous, half is down, and half a gram, half gold, troubles, and thoughts stay darker than. Half a gram, half a man, da 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 da. Again, that polyrhythmic scheme is like cascading like a waterfall over top of the beat. Half a man, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Very cool punch in. And again, the sort of half a man. Heart is in half, half righteous, half is down, and half. Half righteous, heart is in half. So you see again. This tie-in of duality, right? Because he feels like half a man because of the sickness and the disease. But also it ties back in with sort of this half light and half darkness within him. And him not feeling fully in touch with his humanity. And coming to grips with that duality once more. Great writing again. So many layers to this man. What a journey. The fuck was that? Uruk. Auric High? Surely we don't have more Lord of the Rings references here, my precious. Half is down, half a gram, half those troubles and What in the sermon, white hand, Frodo Baggins, bars is going down, Reynolds. Stay darker than a rook, I master plan. Nice. Than that, star, splinter, and cinnamon, cinnamon, irony could kill a man. He makes money when the me- Sinner man, sinner man, Bob Marley, shout out right there, and uh, Naomi, shout out to Sharper than that, star, splinter, and cinnamon, cinnamon, irony could kill a man. He makes money when the music lands expand. Pay me my cheese, rain down Parmesan. Followed by seven, seven whole sins for a self-made army. There it is, six followed by seven, right? Because again, six, 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 you put that together, that's the mark of the devil versus seven, which is normally viewed as more of a holy number. You know, God created the world in six days. He rested on the seventh. Seven days has always been a very holy, uplifted number throughout religions, throughout human society. Seven has always been kind of celebrated, right? It's a very higher viewed numbers so i love sort of this play off of numerology that ren is using throughout his lyricism and even right there 
da 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 rain down parmesan i love how he just slows it down and you hear just that bass kind of wobble in as everything changes once more nice like deceleration through the flow here Killer mine makes money when the music lands pain makes money he's sick boy he's made a lot of money through his pain when the music lands on these beats pay me my cheese rain down parmesan followed by seven seven whole sins for a self-made armageddon sin one pride mm. pride makes a man kill a man for his ego to survive self-made armageddon 666 mark of the beast leading to the armageddon now he ties it back in with his own armageddon clever writing once more for a self-made armageddon sin one pride pride makes a man kill a man for his ego to survive sin two lost lost makes the grass look greener crucifies trust sin three oh crucifies trust like jesus on the cross versus lust can crucify trust it can break it all down because how many people have like cheated on their significant other due to lust so that breaks down trust and i love how he's now taking seven which is flaunted and, and raised up and now he's breaking it down via the seven deadly sins like he did on our money game journey with him when he made us play the money game let's go Bye. and then even like the grass is greener ties back with the grass is greener line that he referenced earlier too nice tie in mate armageddon sin one pride pride makes a man kill a man for his ego to survive sin two lost lost makes the grass look greener crucifies trust Sin free, gluttony, humans consume and consume, planet Earth gets a frontal lobotomy. Four, Whoa. sloth, rinse and repeat, reruns, repeat, time lost. Sin Whoa. five. Oh, sloth, rinse and repeat, reruns, because we all just like over consume now. Just put Netflix on and just binge out. Don't accomplish anything productive with your day. Don't get out into life. Just follow follow the way of the sloth my friend and then even before that planet earth gets a frontal lobotomy just take a nom 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 out of mother nature right there i love again the poetry of that line crucifies trust sin free gluttony humans consume and consume planet earth gets a frontal lobotomy four sloth rinse and repeat reruns repeat time lost sin five envy that's when one man's win is another man's frenzy sin six wrath that's how haters are born my friend sin five envy that's when one man's win is another man's frenzy sin six wrath rage vengeance kill his psychopath ah. sin seven greed greed plants a seed that will destroy us all if we succumb to greed if we take what we need then take more than we need then our oceans will bleed still we feed and we feed and we sleep and repeat then we exile the shepherds and follow the sheep we inherit the meat we inherit this world that we if we exile the shepherds and we follow the other sheep. Oh, I love the way he flips that. And this flow right here is nasty. We sleep and repeat and we exile the shepherds and follow the sheep. We inherit the meat. We inherit this world that we bruise and we beat. We inherit this vanity so because of creeds. Inherit the liars, the murderers, these one sin for every one day of the week. One sin for every one day of the week. He ties it back in with seven once more. Wow, the symbolism is crazy on this. Seven days of the week, seven deadly sins he walks us through, ultimately ending in greed, which leads to overconsumption of our planet. Greed putting us before our fellow man, ultimately what leads to our destruction as a society. And this is what we inherit, the world that we have to live in and operate. We inherit the meek. Again, more biblical references. Wow, are we done? Inherit the liars, the murderers, these one sin for every one day of the week. And you hear sort of that demonic voice, like just screwed underneath of him right there. And I love how the beat kicks out, but he says weak sort of on an acapella version, almost just like leaves you on a cliffhanger. Like you expect another beat to come in, like another switch, another gear to shift. Wow, talk about like leading you to the edge and then just like having you peer over. And once you feel that vertigo, that's it. We cut the song and then we're on to the next one. Let me tell you, man, in terms of the complexity of his writing, He's got a very poetic mind, too. There's just so much depth. It's so much fun to break down the lyricism of Rem. But what I love, too, about this opening track is that it really sets the tone for a lot of the themes we're going to experience throughout the rest of the Sick Boy album. Really touching on that duality. Playing on significant numbers like 13, 6, and 7. The religious references. The Sick Boy references. His own psychology and his own musings and wanderings. Even sort of the masochist references. And you see some of the darkness within him. And trying to accept all of this as he walks through this path of his own life and walks through this path of the world that he sees around him. And then on top of that, the constant production changes that we've pointed out, the constant flow switches, the great rhyme writing. I mean, this track right here, this might be one of my favorites. This is the total package. Ren, you were not so certified. Hope you guys liked today's video. Listen, for some reason you're here at the end, obviously enjoy the content. Do me a huge, huge favor. Support the channel directly. Subscribe, notifications on. It really, really does go a long way. I love you guys. Don't forget, brand new music video dropping right here on this channel tomorrow. I will catch you there. All right, guys, I'm out. 
go and get it renewed but i never really understood the construct of renewed because it's already used why not buy something new ask anyone if they really had to choose would they prefer something new i would my my neighbor once had a tea kettle a tea kettle 